Welcome to Gem U, Gem Shopping Network's very own educational series designed to help our customers expand their knowledge in the vast world of gemstones and jewelry. After each lesson, be sure to visit gemshopping.com and test your knowledge by taking our quiz and qualifying to win a $100 Gem Shopping gift card. And now, here's Alan. Hi, welcome to Gem U, Gem University part of Gem Shopping Network. And we're going to have some fun today. And you don't have to take notes. It's going to be simple, you'll remember it. We're going to talk about those items in jewelry that were tissue bearing from the sea and from a tree and from ancient times, 65 million years ago. The first one we're going to do is pearls. Pearls are so exciting. They come from a mollusk and they're usually, when they're natural, no irritant was added. But in the late 1800s and very, very early 1900s, Mickey Moto, you know Mickey Moto, he inserted or he cultured a pearl. He inserted it in the mantle, closed it, and over the years he let it grow. And that is what started culturing pearls. Almost 95% of the world's pearls are cultured. In fact, we're talking about the pearls of the world. The most famous one is the Akoya pearl. The Akoya pearl comes from the Akoya oyster, originally off the coast of Japan. Then there are freshwater pearls. They're called biwas. They look like little uh, rice krispies, and they're from Biwa Lake, also in Japan. And then, of course, the famous Tahitian pearl from the South Sea, from the exotic islands. Blackish color, uh, secondary colors can be a, what they call a peacock, or it can be a purple in French called aubergine. And last but not least are the South Seas off the coast of Australia. And there's two types, and this is exciting. There are the white pearls that are huge, the largest in the world. They can go up to as much as 20 millimeters. 22 is the largest I've ever seen, and one of the largest ever taken from an oyster. And one of the best of South Seas are the golden. The golden pearls can go from a, what they call a butter golden to a vivid golden, almost like 18 karat gold. Pearls are the linchpin of a lady's jewelry wardrobe. I know my wife and I, we have three daughters. The first piece of jewelry we started was a pearl necklace. And another little caveat is the birthstone for June is pearl. Moving on to a, another item that is tissue bearing is called amber. Amber really was used about 25,000 years ago as amulets. And it's really nothing more than sap that oozes from the tree. And it hits the water and it congeals it. But the most exciting part is when it drips or oozes down the tree, it picks up what's on that tree. It picks up little pieces of bark and encapsulates it along with little flies or little bee or anything that was alive. It captures it and it holds like a mosquito inside. And those are the ones that are really sought after. They're captured forever inside the amber. Next is one of my favorites, which is coral. Coral is found many places all over the world. It's part of a reef that's formed by small microscopic polyps that cluster together over hundreds of years, over a long period of time, it can form a reef, and then they grow out into branches like the trees. Interestingly enough, the closer the coral is to the surface of the water, the sun can bleach it. So the deeper it goes, it goes from what they call a white to what they call a pink, or I love it, angel skin coral, or like the Italians say, pelle di angele, very romantic. Then off the coast of Sardinia, there's beautiful red coral. But folks, the one that's most sought after is the deep, vibrant red, almost a blood red, hence they call it oxblood coral. That material is rare and seldom seen today, most sought after. And last but not least, here's a, a famous one that not many people know about. It's called amylite. Amylite was discovered in Canada, in a mine in Alberta, Canada, and the only mine in the world that yields it, or that area yields it, is Lethbridge Mines. It used to be a farm, now they call it a mine. The material itself was like a shell that rode on the top of the water 65 million years ago. And I wasn't there then. It was before even my time. And it's very iridescent. When it's opened up, it's a very iridescent color. They liken it, believe it or not, to opal. It shows colors of blue and red and green and has a wonderful iridescence. 
folks, there's a little touch of, of items that are used today that are tissue bearing. We love them. I want to thank you for joining me. And please go to our website, gemshopping.com. And there's a little test there. You'll have fun taking it. Please stay tuned for other programs. Thanks. This has been another installment of Gem U. Join us every Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern for a new lesson at Gem U. And check gemshopping.com to review each of the lessons and for all of the details.